Hello, welcome to another instructional video brought to you by ZappySys. In this video, you'll see how easy it is to use a custom ZappySys component in SSIS to retrieve data that's in XML format and then load it into some target destination. You can use this component if you're getting XML data from an API. You can use this component if you have XML data saved somewhere locally in a file. Or you can use this component if you just want to copy and paste XML data directly into it. As always, this component is a custom one that you'll be able to use once you download and install the ZappySys Power Pack. And you can get that directly from the downloads page at zappysys.com, and I'll be sure to add a link in the description below. All right, let's get to it. So I'm in Visual Studio, and I'm just gonna drag a Dataflow task to my pane. And inside that, you'll notice all of the ZappySys ZS prefix components that you'll have access to once you download the power pack. And you might have noticed some even back on the control flow tab, there's different components available there. So I'm in the data flow pane and I'm gonna drag this XML source component. So the first thing you'll notice is there is a lot of configuration. And this thing is not something that replaces native SSIS functionality. So this is very customizable, but a major enhancement if you're often dealing with data in XML format. So again, this thing is available if you have data in a file or if you wanna get it from an API. The first example we'll use is getting data from an API. And notice I say example because there are some built-in functions or built-in examples rather with this component so you can see how it works. So I'm just gonna use those and I'm gonna to jump to example four because that one uses an actual URL to get the data. Now, I do wanna stress, anytime you're getting data from an API, you'll want to refer to your API documentation for things like credentials, authorization, headers, all of those details that are super important, you need to check out your API documentation. But I do wanna show you an easy example of how to get the data. This particular example doesn't use a uh, username and password. So if you were using credentials, you could use this little feature and you could create new credential settings for HTTP OAuth if you have those needs. Again, this one does not need any password, so I'm just gonna turn that off. You'll also need to know what method you're gonna use. Most of the time, if you're just retrieving data, you're probably gonna use the get method, but maybe yours is configured to use the post method, and if so, You'll notice the body went from being grayed out to now you can insert data into this uh, field. I'm gonna change it back to the get method. You also have the HTTP headers where maybe you wanna put something like your API key or secret or something in these headers. You can just type directly into these fields or you can click the raw edit and you can just edit it over here. I do wanna jump back up to the URL because I'm just using one that's provided, but you might notice this little system colon colon start time. If you click this little green X, now you can edit this URL without typing it in that string, but notice you can insert variables. So this particular URL uses a variable. Maybe you do too. That's just an available feature in the URL. So this particular URL is getting uh, a data set called book that is an array that's in this other object called bookstore. So if I hit preview, these are all of the books that are in the array called book. And that looks great to me. There's only four books, it's a small data set, but this is how you can check to see what's the data gonna look like if I retrieved it using the configuration that I have. That's just a super basic example of how to get data from an API that's in XML format. But like I said, maybe you have a locally saved file so I'm gonna overwrite this URL by clicking the three little dots, and I'm gonna to browse to my desktop, and I have an invoices that's in an XML format. I have this file saved, so I'm gonna open that. Notice all the API configuration went away because now I'm using a locally saved file. So I'm still using the same bookstore and book array. When I hit preview, this file says, hey, below is the sample, but there's no data. What's up with that? So I'm gonna hit close, 
And now I'm going to go use the select filter box because this is super important. This is how you can look at the data that's in your file and truly select the array or the values that you want. So this bookstore was still saved from the API example. In my file, I actually have an object called root, and then I have an array with values. So I'm going to select that, and it says, hey, we've detected some possible arrays within your data set. Do you want to use that? Yep. Now when I hit preview, ah, uh, here we go. This is the data from my file. So I had a lot more columns in this example of the file that I used than that previous API example. One more way you could use this component is copying and pasting XML data directly into this component. So I went to example one, and here's some comments that just explain this data set. But now I have these book tags within a store. So this book has an ID with this author, this title, this price, etc. This book has an ID with this author, this price. That's an example of how, if you had XML data and you wanted to just copy and paste it in here, you could do that. I'm going to go back to this select filters feature because now I have my store and I have my book tags. That's what I want. So what's going on here? I didn't have the option to select the books. So go back into store, highlight the book. Now it's selecting those actual book tags. It gave me the same feature. Hey, it looks like I found some array of books. Yep, that's what I want. Hit the preview. And now we have our books with my IDs, with the authors, etc. So that select filter box is super important, and so is highlighting the tag that you want or the value that you want. I'm just going to stick with this particular example, and we're going to load that into a database. So now I'm going to go to the columns tab, and here's where, based on the data that was retrieved, this metadata, the values or the limits or the lengths of these data fields, are provided. Now you could change these if you wanted. So let's say you know sometimes there is an author and they have a really long last name. So it's more than 80 characters. It's a hundred characters. You could override it and then you could check the lock box. And now this field will always be a hundred characters no matter what the XML file looks like and no matter what this component will guess it will use a hundred characters. So these columns look good. The metadata looks good. I'm going to say OK. And now I'm going to drag the Zappysys upsert component. And I'm going to connect the two. And I'm just going to pick a new connection. I have a local database called test. And I'm going to make a new table to put this data in. And I'm going to call it XML data. So I'm going to say OK. It mapped my columns. Those look great. I'm going to specify the keys. And I'm going to say OK. It says, hey, do you want to create an index? I'm going to say no. So now I'm going to run this package. It got our 12 rows. And now let's go check SQL Studio. And there are our 12 rows. Super easy. Hopefully you see how customizable it is, how easy it is to use the Zappysys XML source custom component. If you want to give it a try, but you haven't already downloaded the Zappysys Power Pack, go ahead and do that now. And don't forget that the link is in the description below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the Zappysys YouTube channel for more updates and tips and tricks in the future.